I just want to say one quick word before I hand the microphone over. Um, I said at the beginning that you're going to get a lot of different points of view, and you are. Um, I ne never wanted to be considered normal. I, didn't, I don't like the word, but there were a lot of different points of view. And you aren't, us. Jerry. You aren't. No, I, I'm, I'm normal. I'm not. You aren't, Jerry. You aren't. <laughs> um, so, but you're going to hear that, and when we have the discussion, and I forgot to mention at the beginning that at the second part, after we show the the film, uh, we're going to throw it open to the audience and have an interactive with everybody here. So uh, I forgot to mention that. Now I turn the microphone over to my very, very, very good friend of the last 40 years, Mark Siegel, who was. So fabulous, you won't believe it. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I come here from a little different place than some of the other people on this table. On May 10th, 1969, I moved to New York from, I moved to Phil New York from Philadelphia. And the reason I did that, because as a 13-year-old child, I watched the David Susskind show and discovered, gee, gay people, people like me, lived in New York. I didn't know anywhere in Philadelphia. So on May 10th, I walk, came to New York, and the first thing I did was walk into the Mattachine Society. And then I met Mar a man by the name of Marty Robinson, who's one of the great heroes of our community, for those of you who don't know. <laughs> Marty said to me, you don't want to be like these people because they all wear suits and ties and dresses. And we, if this was 1969, folks. So, to make a long story short, um, I got involved with Marty and uh, became a member of GLF. And I want to describe GLF to you in 1969. I was 18 years old. Um, I was told tonight that there was another person who was younger than me in GLF, but I used to call myself the baby of GLF. So if I was the child of GLF, these were my parents, and GLF was my dysfunctional family. <laughs> Now, what was GLF like in 1969? It was full of consciousness-raising groups, whether or not we support the Black Panthers, whether or not we support Jane Fonda, um, talking about sexism, racism, and then I started bringing up ageism. Um, and then I, in Ju June, I believe, of 1970, founded an organization called Gay Youth, which uh, today I was lucky enough to go downstairs, and Jerry took me to see the latest offspring of gay youth, the YES Center here at the Community Center. And I'm a proud papa. <laughs> <laughs> so at 18 years old, I was a know-it-all. Now I'm a 57-year-old know-it-all. <laughs> so I want to tell you what GLF did for me. It taught me how to have pride in who I am, taught me how to be arrogant, how to fight for what I believe in, more importantly. So after I left GLF, well, before I left GLF, the first year's march. One of the, this is the, the, the sticker for the first year march. As you re might see, it wasn't called Gay Pride then. It was a march and gay in. And we got these on tablets, and we would take them off and lick the back and put them on poles, if any of you remember that. Um, get you backwards. At 18 years old, I was a cute kid, and I got away with a lot. This is what I looked like at 18. This is my hack license. This is how I made money when I lived in New York. I was a taxi driver. This is one of our first demonstrations, GLF demonstrations. And Jerry, I'm going to have to lean on you. I'm all the way to the left here. Jerry, what, what demonstrations? I have no idea. And isn't that Doug Carver? You think I can see? I'm old. <laughs> um, I don't so, know. I'll have to look at it later. All right. What I realized from GLF in 1969-71 in was the way to get to the public was through the media, which got me to realize Mattachine and gay people were in New York. So to get through to the pu public about us, we had to get the media to speak against about us. So in, back in Philadelphia in 71, I grew, created a group called Gay Raiders. We started something called Campaign Against the Networks. We disrupted TV shows right and left. Today's show, Tonight's show, The Mike Douglas Show, and most importantly, the CBS News with Walter Cronkite. No, November 3rd, 1973, if you were watching the uh, Walter Cronkite TV, CV, CBS Evening News, and at that point there was no cable TV, and 60% of America was. 
at 16 minutes into the show, you would see me walking across in front of the camera. I sat on Walter's desk, <laughs> held the sign, gays, protest, CBS, bigotry. Um, I was a rep. <laughs> arrested, um, one of the first times. Um, and that campaign went on for another few months. We disrupted more TV shows. Morris Kite in Los Angeles, Troy Perry in Los Angeles took care of the legal cost and getting me out to LA to disrupt a number of other shows. By the time we finished that in 1973, long before GLAD, or people being paid $90,000 a year to be the executive director, um, we, had a, we had signed statements from ABC, NBC, and CBS to change programming uh, rules, as they called it in the days, standards and practices. And I'm very happy to say that Walter Cronkite himself changed the way gay people were covered on the news because four weeks after our trial at 100 Center Street, um, where Walter Cronkite testified, if you looked at the CBS Evening News, after the first break, he came back and reported on the 26 cities at that point that had passed gay rights legislation. So, so I figured we could do this some other places. So I decided to use Pennsylvania as an example of what could be done. So one of the, I, GLF was in my blood, so I figured let's do some crazy things. This is me after I'd been carted out outside of Independence Hall after I had chained myself to the Liberty Bell. <laughs> that, the, between that and the Mike, Mike Douglas show and the Walter Cronkite show, in 19, from 1973 to 76, if you're watching TV talk shows, and that was the heyday of TV talk shows, um, you probably saw me pop up talking about gay issues. I debated uh, Dr. Green about the APA nomenclature on the Phil Donahue show. Um, I was, my, 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 my parents and I and my lover were the first family on, what's the lady with the red glasses? Sally Cassie Raphael. Yeah, I did, did, did that on her show. Um, just discussed Bible stuff. I mean, it was just totally crazy. But then I met a man in 1975 by the name of, the Pennsylvania governor by the name of Governor Milton Schapp. He was the first governor in the country to ever meet with gay people. And he did something remarkable. He said to me, Mark, what could I as governor do for gay people? And I looked at him very crazy because no elected official had ever said that before of that high level. And he, he saw me looking at him and said, Mark, what's my real name? I didn't know. His real name was Shapiro. He said, I understand discrimination. I had to change it to Shap to become governor of Pennsylvania. I said, well, if you're reelected, re because he was running for reelection, I said, what you could do is create a commission or panel or something to look at the problems of gay people. On April 14, 1975, Governor Milton Schapp issued an executive order, which for the first time in American history created an official government panel to look at the problems of gay people. Now that, he also then issued an executive order, the first of its type, to outlaw discrimination in state hiring. Now executive orders only work while that governor is governor. But only one cabinet minister um, went against him, and that was Colonel Barger of the state troops. So one morning I got a call from the uh, lieutenant governor, his name was Ernie Klein, he says, the governor wants you to sign up to become a state trooper. So, the next morning I went to the state police barracks. The governor's press officer called all of the press. So I was there, I signed up. I had no idea what I was doing. I went into the building, signed up to become a state trooper. God forbid, can you imagine being with a gun? That's frightening. Um, came outside uh, and the reporters asked me, uh, Mr. Siegel, why do you want to be a state trooper? You're a homosexual. <laughs> and I said, because I like men in uniform. <laughs> GLF is always stayed with me. From that point, I want to take it up a little further just to today, because there's other people here who need to talk. This year um, is a very interesting year. Um, for, for a living, by the way, I publish Philadelphia Gay News. It's a local newspaper, um, which copies are, which I have right here. <laughs> G 
This January, I will celebrate my 32nd anniversary as the publisher of that paper. I have helped to move forward what I believe is the local gay press movement, because when Philadelphia Gay News started, it was one of only three weekly gay newspapers in the country. Today, there are over a hundred, and that's wonderful. But bringing it up all the way forward to this year, there was a, something called the Pennsylvania primary just recently, and for those people in the press, like Andy here, they know about this little story. Um, the Obama campaign, as it went from state to state to state, would always hold out the idea of an interview with Senator Obama to the local gay press. And then the primary would come, and they would pack up their tent and go to the next state. And it never, ever happened. Well, when they got to Pennsylvania, as you, my, little, my GLF blood came out in me. Um, I decided we were going to get an interview with Obama, or else. That simple. Well, we got our interview with Clinton. Obama's people tried to play us. Unfortunately, they weren't, didn't get away with it. Um, the, the week we were supposed to do the interview with Obama and he didn't do it, Hillary Clinton did. This was the front page of the Philadelphia Gay News. What does it say? You'll notice it's Clinton Talks, Obama Box. And there's a half a front page, blank. Well, this made the cover, or this made Time Magazine, Newsweek, we were on C CNN Situation Room, the Obama people went outrageously crazy. The last thing that Obama did for, during the campaign in Pennsylvania was a whistle stop tour. Um, there were five, there were many reporters on that train trip, but he only gave five exclusive interviews. In four of the five of the exclusive interviews, CVS, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, Philadelphia Inquirer, uh, I forget the other two, um, of four of the five interviews, the first question was to Senator Obama, what about this controversy with the Philadelphia Gay News? Four days before the primary, um, the Philadelphia Democratic Party had a, uh, thank you, had, had its uh, annual dinner. This is the last part of it. Um, and there was a, a private VIP party, which I was invited to. I was told to take a picture of Obama with our city council president. I did. Obama reached over to shake my hand. As he did, I said, Mark Sigel. And he said, you're the one, with a big smile on his face. The point being, very simple, and I sum this up with, with GLF, I could not have done all that without GLF. So GLF now, the spirit of GLF, has made it all the way to a presidential election. <laughs>